Food Forest, an edible landscape, a living grocery store, transforming lawns into food forest. A food forest is a food forest, is a, excuse me, is a forest. It's an ecosystem. It's a habitat that is designed uh, to generate food for people um, as well as creating a natural habitat for life. So I would say when you look at a forest, you can see all the layers of the rice. Right? see tall trees, medium trees, short trees, shrubs, ground covers, vines, and stuff growing under the ground and all that type of stuff, right? So if we can intentionally build those systems, right? Like that's an ecosystem, everything that I just explained, all those layers of a, of a system, right? If we can build that with a productive species that provide food and sustenance for humans, that seems like a really smart idea. Right, because we can build that type of system. So we're taking a forest and we're putting in productive edible species. And um, in turn, we're using the natural system to our advantage, right? So if we can help that system start for two to three years. We just got off a call talking about uh, how we need to baby like a child that comes into the world. We really need to tend to that thing for the first couple of years, right? So if we can build a forest and have it be productive and tend to it for the first couple of years, eventually that system will overtake itself and it'll manage itself. There's certain trees that will drop leaves and twigs will drop, support species will grow. And now we have this system that is producing food for us every single year. So it seems like the smartest thing that humans could do is design and implement food for us and live in our natural systems that we're already living in. Awesome. So you're going to be helping with the design part of this, right? So do you want to explain how that goes? Like, how do you design a food forest just like briefly for people to understand yeah. like, why is that important? And how is that going to be integrated for this project? You know, it's perfect. Your question is perfect off of what I was just saying. So when little background with agriculture, we've only been industrialized uh, farming for let's just call it a hundred years, right? So in that time, we've just learned nature a little bit better and we've learned how nature works and in short we call that permaculture because there's all these different agricultural sciences um ecology agriculture all this stuff right we now understand nature a little bit more than we ever did right there's probably so much more for us to learn so if we take what we've learned and we said okay there's tall trees on top of medium trees and there's cycles and certain trees have certain functions and there's certain compounds in different trees and we've understood those then we can say, okay, if this is the desired result that I'm trying to create, then these are the ingredients to the stew that I need, right? So that's why design is so important is because we have to design it intentionally, right? And you can, without getting too far right away, like if we are bringing in everything that you need for a system to thrive, so you do need a canopy tree to provide shade, you do want productive trees to be tended to while they're younger, you want shrubs to feed the the native and local birds and wildlife. And, and you wanna bring in the milkweed so that the certain butterfly will come and lay eggs on it. And those caterpillars will bring more butterflies to the environment. And you want flowers and a diversity, a diverse color of them because you want all the bees coming in and doing what they need to do, right? So if we understand that, then we can intentionally plant those plants with each other. But it advances in that because if I can put a canopy tree over a smaller productive tree, then early in its years, the, the support tree is adding nitrogen to the soil and that's through a method called drop and drop and just dropping its leaves, right? So that system's happening naturally anyways. And if I put that tree in and it starts doing that and it's adding good nutrients to the soil, then I'm creating good soil, awesome. And if I put my avocado tree right next to that, eventually that avocado tree is gonna get so big that the canopy tree won't be able to be there. It's gonna take its space, but at, at first it's young, right? It's small. So by putting in these productive support native species that can build the ecosystem, we start to build soil and then our productive species get big. So that's different. Everything that I just explained is completely different than sticking a uh, 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 citrus tree in the middle of my yard and just hoping that it grows and watering it and just being like, grow, it's just got grass around it, right? So where's the organic matter? Where's the moisture? Where's the nitrogen? Where's the where's the mulch that comes from other trees? Where it's where's its friends? Where's its family? Right? It doesn't have anything. So to answer your question, design is everything because you have to be intentional about what you're doing and have a plan over the next two to three years. Awesome. So so yeah. So let's look at some uh, examples here. What the blueprint that you're looking at right now. So that design, we can speed ramp it up, right? So that design has all the elements that it takes for somebody to come in and learn a lot of what we're talking about, right? So you come in there. This is, a, I'm actually more familiar with the other design, but this one has, um, 
you can come in. So let's think about these lands, right? So if you have this property and you have food for us, you obviously have food that could be served. You have uh, plants that could come from a nursery that people could buy from you. You have mulch or compost from your system that you could sell so people could come purchase. You have a tour that somebody can come and walk through and learn about permaculture and just take a take a look at this food forest and say, well, I want something like this on my property, right? Or I want to offer my community this. There's the Airbnb where somebody could stay overnight. There's a barn or a place or a barn dominium where people could come in and learn, which is a big thing for you, having educational events. There's the cafe where you can not just sell the food, but you can offer it in a different form. There's um, there's animals. You know what I mean? You can get. I think we have some areas for animals in there. There might be a, a pond. Um, so the whole point of what I'm saying is that there's so many different offerings in this atmosphere, which I think is really the true value And what we're talking about by bringing these all over the place, right? Because now if we have this environment, I'll share a quick story. Somebody got a sweet potato slip from Galt's Landing from Jim two years ago. And he planted, it's a little slip, it's a little vine. This is Mike. This is Mike. Yeah, right. And and this year, you guys, he got a hundred pounds of sweet potatoes. Like he took one little vine from Galt's and he got a hundred pounds of sweet potatoes. Now, granted, is he in his system and working it? Absolutely. I just do it. Right. That one special one. Right. But the point is, is that now imagine we have these seeds all over the country and all over the world. And then you're just giving away these plants. Mm -hmm. Like where else are these people going to get these plants? There's nurseries all over the place. Right. But what if we can make it more accessible um, and drive the price of it down, drive the cost of it down? That's different. And because it's not just the financial cost of it, but it's also the effort and the time. Like if there's nurseries that are pretty far from me, I have to travel an hour and a half to two hours to go to a nursery. There's a lot more effort in that, right? Where if I have this in my local community, it's right down the street. You know what I'm saying? So the cost value is is more than just financial. And then you have the other people around you that are growing in a similar um, grow zone, right? Similar, similar climate. So now you can, what's working for you? <laughs> well, this worked for me, try that. You get what I'm saying? So there's yeah. so much value in the design and really what it is, is it's an epicenter and a seed to propagate the entire community. And that's what this design is showcasing all those elements necessary. Awesome. So this is a, this is a 14 acre. Um, really it's a pasture. There's a corner, a corner house on it. Let's call it about an acre. And then there's a pond on the back of it. So what we proposed was going in there and basically building a small community center, right? Which in the middle would be the community food forest and, um, some of the lots with whether it's Airbnbs or, um, what am I saying? You know, why am I really trip like a cafe type place, right? A community space, yeah. right. For people to come in. Awesome. And then as you'd come in, you'd part and there'd be houses and homes along the East and West side of the property again with a pond on the North side. So that's what, that's what you're seeing in that, in that picture. And, um, I think that that's, I always say when I got involved in this work, I learned two things. One, permaculture and food forest was the way we had to grow food. And two, we had to make this more abundantly available to, for people to live in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, well, let me address that real quick because yeah. I want to mention that for this presentation, people are going to probably ask if they should live, if they can live on this five acre property that I found as an example, but we may mm-hmm. find more acres in the future and we may absolutely do more projects in the future. So yeah. I'm open to anything and depending on you know the investors and, and what happens now, uh, we can determine what to do then. And I'm staying very present. I told you, Cameron, that like, I'm trying to figure things out. And so I'm open to suggestions. I'm open to ideas. There's people I know who are out of state who are like, can I just bring my RV on site? What do you think about that? You know, like people who want to like, oh, bring their RV. Is that something that people should have on five acres? Or, you know, do you think you can make anything work pretty much? Uh, yes, so you making anything work because it's just a decision, right? Like, is this becoming a campground though? Mm-hmm. You know, I think, I don't right. think that's necessarily what we're looking for, if right. you know what I mean, but you can. Like, if you can band together <laughs> with people and do this all over the place, this doesn't have to be an education site for everybody, but it can be a, a center where people come together and say, hey, let's, 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 let's right. have some area where we work together in, and then you can also have your own. Like, yes. I think there's a good balance in that, right? Um, and as Tony's going to say in this presentation, yeah. <laughs> speaking of future tense, um, yeah. he says that we can do the mushroom farm on anybody's land. If somebody already yeah. has land out there and they want us to, to do it, it only takes about half an acre, you know, and that's mm-hmm. going to, pr- to produce a massive amount of ROI, which is return on investment. So he'll be yeah. sharing more about that in this presentation. 
Um, here are more examples, like here are actual photos oh, that you sent me. I got to say something real quick on that, sure. though. So talking about the ROI, something I think is so valuable is is we talk about an ROI typically in the amount that we're going to get in return. But what because you typically measure an investment and most of the time it's seen as financial. Right. But when you measure an investment, you look at the amount that you'll get in return and how secure it is, how certain that's going to happen. Right. So what if I could tell you that? you're going to get a return. <laughs> you invest in this, you're going to get a, a, a positive return, right? Because we know that fruit and stuff will grow. Like we know that with doing these systems. But what if I could tell you that it was a 1000% certainty that it was going to be productive, it was going to be positive, there was going to be a gain, there was going to be a return, right? Like that's what we have here by building these systems, we're using what nature is already doing. If we can just kind of tend to it early and get the hell out of the way, I'm telling you, I'm so excited for year three, four and five when these young fruit trees are like big and every single year they just produce, whether I'm out there or I'm not, that's what they're doing. We're creating stable systems. So when you talk about an investment, what if somebody could invest in something where you knew you just for somehow, somehow you just knew you were going to get a return. Then tell me how this isn't that. Right. You're going to get a return. Nature's going to grow. Cause that's what it does. Yeah. I mean, I Certainly. wouldn't have pitched this whole idea and, you know, have all this, like if I wasn't inspired, I went to Galt. So I'm like, wow. And then every single time <laughs> I go back, like, it'll just be one month or two months. It's like explosive yeah. growth. It's always something. It's yeah, always, yeah. there's always something growing, right? So these so houses would be crazy, that? man. These people who you put, yep. the, these are just some of the food forests you installed, right? Yeah. These are young systems. Um, it's cool that we get to watch these over the next couple of years. There's a couple of those that I, I definitely am very fond of. Um, yeah. Just cool stuff, man. It's again, you're going in there and you're building a system and you're using nature to your to your advantage, to our advantage for sure. Awesome. And you can see there's the Airbnb units mm -hmm. right there that are fully off grid. Um, I don't know if we'll be using the same exact Airbnb units, but basically, because I know other farmers in the area that have a similar type of idea with doing off-grid Airbnbs, but you can tell then it's a trend and that's why they're doing it <laughs> because it's yep. very popular around here and people love to visit Florida. They have a word yep. for agritourism. <laughs> yep. It really is. It's a whole industry, dude. I think it's something very new. I think people are getting connected back to the land. The last couple of decades have really pulled people into the cities. You know what I mean? If you literally just look at the last hundred years, it's just pulled everybody into the cities. Mm -hmm. And I think there's just a couple of rays of light that are just beaming out. That's like, nope, going back to the land. Right. And some people yep. are doing it for themselves and they want to be a homesteader and they just want to do it on their own. Totally cool. You know what I mean? But I think there's a lot of people that are coming around to wanting to do this in community. So I think that you're putting this in a place where it's in a city so it can be an example so people can see it close to home so it's convenient, right? But we got to have that next stage and we got to have that outlets, which means people can actually get to the land. We have to make it available for people. Otherwise, it's like, cool, I love this. I want it. I'm on my own trying to find it. You get what I'm saying? So the next yeah. audience to serve after building these, if you want to live this way in this type of food forest property working naturally and having everything that you need on the property when you step outside your door then i would encourage that person to be involved in the building of these community centers because it's going to feed it literally it's going to be the propagation yeah. so that we can develop land this way we need these seeds and centers all over the place awesome what would you say is, is priority uh if say you you get land is it the food forest first um, so permaculture design, the first three elements you want to start with is, uh, roadways where, where you're going to be moving through the property okay. structures, so where you're going to actually pop up shop and, uh, water management. So now let's talk finances, Cameron, you know, all about design. So you know how much it costs to set up a food force to set up these Airbnbs and the different structures that we want to do. We don't have to do them all up front, but what would yeah. you say is the general figures for these? If you can give us a picture. For sure. Um, I always roughly tell people if you want a food forest acreage, I say, and again, this is in Florida, so that's mostly what we're talking about. I could say about $75,000, you could completely cover a one acre piece of land on a, for, with a food forest. That could easily go up and that could go down if there's different things that you could do, right? Um, but I think what we really want to talk about is the um, this this education center, right? And I was so blessed to be a part of the build at Galt's, which is when, if, for those who have been to Galt's or have seen pictures of it, when you first pull in, there's kind of a triangle shaped part of the property that is exactly one acre. And in that one acre, obviously there's a road that goes through it, but there's three Airbnbs with a community center, uh, with a, excuse me, an outdoor like community seated area, right? There's a fire pit and, and, and barbecue and everything. 
and then there are solar panels that wrap around it and there's also a pond right so i give you kind of a visual of everything that's like available to us right there and to get that thing going i believe it was around seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and that was including labor um the solar the actual structures for the airbnbs the pavement like everything right um i actually don't think it included the road i don't think that was included right so again that just gives you like some perspective of like okay if we had one acre that had some places for people to live and there's actually there's actually three other structures on it i should say but three of them are airbnbs right so there's even more to it than i'm than i'm even saying um so that takes a picture of like what it's there so now we have a space um to grow food because there's a whole like the whole area the parking lot is really cool it's actually laced with with uh, i said laced it's got uh citrus trees and uh vines growing on the fence and all these herbs and um and everything like that so it's again multifunctional so we're not just having parking spots like hey don't keep them concrete they're asphalt keep them clean blow the leaves off of them and just keep it the way it is always no it's grass it's it's green stuff that you can actually grow on it's a part of the ecosystem and you're covered by plants when you pull into it right so now we have parking and we have food so i say that to say the whole one acre is incredibly productive for this three quarters of a million dollars because of the way you can stack multiple functions we actually capture all the gray water out of the three airbnbs into the pond and it is intentionally designed with native plants here in florida central florida that help to cleanse the water so now we're not just blowing gray water out into the ground into a septic field or paying all this money to send it back through the city only for it to be chlorinated again right we don't have all that effort or all that waste right it goes into a pond and it's utilized in the pond and the ducks swim in this pond so there's ducks on the property as well so there's so much function and value in what's going on for this that um there's, there's just so much value in in the land to do that so and as far as purchasing the purchase price of a property it's tough to say like what is that going because every piece of property is different sure what size are you getting and stuff like that so but i'd say that it was under a million bucks to get one acre fully educational like where people can come in and have a tour and they can stay there and they can connect and they can eat right yeah that's the vision i believe in clarity i believe in if you can show the the path of what you're doing and being very inclusive and transparent clarity transparent and uh, inclusive i think is really important so the person that i'm working with i've been blessed to get connected directly with the owner so i'm not working through an agent i think that's really important in this it's very personable right, right. um and showing them what you're doing saying hey this is this is what we can do and i say that because of the situation that you and i are in that we're not just coming in and paying for something or we're not bringing the land to the table and that's just the reality of like the world that we live in so from this angle more transparency and more inclusivity and bringing two things together that could work i think is really important for us in this position so i love that you're, you're showcasing all of this like here's what it costs here's the land here's what we're building here's what it'll look like here's the revenue right because i know there's other numbers and stuff like that in here so i think just saying hey this is what's available let's do it this, this is what's funny about this industry right now is that there's not a lot of people like know how to actually do it, like to execute it, right? Like if you go in there and you start talking about a real estate property where you're gonna do a multifamily and like build a, a sky rise on it and somebody else hears about the deal and like they like they can actually go around you and buy it and, and do what you were gonna do. But how many people are doing what we're talking about right now, dude? This these land, these properties don't hold the same value to other people that they hold to us because we see a vision on the land yeah. that makes it so much more valuable. Like I said, it's not even the dollar amount, it's like what we're doing. So I say all that to say the more inclusive we are, more people are like, well, I, I want to get in on that because they don't know how to do it on their own. Like there's the people don't have the infrastructure. They don't have the design team. They don't have all the resources locally. You know what I mean? The example for it and like everything in place, right? We'll get there and because that's the goal is to get there. So anyways, like doing more of these and like showing real world examples with properties, dude, I'm like totally down. So it's funny when, when, investing in land right like people will invest in land and and how does their land go up in value but it's funny so we talk about land inflating in value and inflation of the dollar right so does the land value actually increase when somebody buys it and just holds it it yeah. just sits there and they wait for the value of it financially for it to go up right mm -hmm. but if we come in and we actually put something on the land that is productive then you actually have intrinsic tangible value Right. So that's what I would share to anybody investing in land with this vision is if you're just investing in land because you're going to hold it because the history of the economy is telling me that it's going to inflate in value. And then one day, someday I'll sell it for more money. Then like that's not real value. 
But if you go in and you actually build something on it and you build natural habitat and you build productive species and you build a garden and you put Airbnb so other people can stay and maybe a house for myself and like, that's valuable. I get it. Right. So if you go in and you actually put something that's valuable on the land, now we have land value increasing. Now it's actually going up in value. Right. So that's what we're doing here. You don't even have to live on the land. You, you can you don't have to do a food forest. You can bring in animals and if they have a grazing system and um, and then you also have a garden and then you also have a food forest. Right. And oh, by the way, maybe we should just educate people because there's a lot of resources here and we could share the resources and you can sell the resources and basically boost your community. So land value. So tell me about land value. Like, you know what I mean? Like this is really adding value to the land. And if you do it right for the first couple of years, you could walk away and this piece of land will be productive for for a really long time. Awesome. Generations to come.